I'm super excited. Today on the show, we have Whitney Jones, the one and only Whitney Jones, two-time Miss Olympia, uh, mom of two amazing young men, and owner of Pro Physiques in Gilbert, Arizona, as well as she has her own line of clothing called Fearless. And I'm excited about that. I love the name Fearless. Um, on top of that, she, hold, she owns and promotes her own MPC Whitney Jones Classic, which just occurred a couple of weeks ago, a couple of months ago. So we're going to be talking with, again, two-time Miss Olympia Whitney Jones about fitness, some of the myths of health, weight loss, and it's going to be an incredible, incredible show. So you guys are in for a treat. Miss Whitney Jones, welcome to the show. Hello, good morning. How are you? Um, I'm doing great. I'm excited to have you here. And you know what? I think that uh, this is going to be an eye opener for a lot of people because there's so much confusion, so much myth about uh, losing weight, getting healthy. Um, you know, what does it mean to be a woman and lift weights? And I just can't believe that here we are almost 2021. And I think it's almost just as confusing as it was back when I was, I don't know, in my teens uh, a long time ago, uh, you know, back in the, you know, 80s when, when women were just then starting to lift weights. There was just so much BS around, you know, that, that, that weightlifting for women was somehow bad. And right. it's, it's still, it's not as bad as it used to be, but it still lingers. I'm, I'm just amazed about that. Yeah, it, it's come a long way, but honestly, there is. It's the myth that women don't belong in a weight room, that women are just supposed to be cardio bunnies. And honestly, that's further from the truth for anyone, um, because primarily it's it's necessary for health. Yes. Above all, everything outside of like the physical appearance, everybody needs this. Everybody needs to exercise. Everybody needs to like not just do cardio, but to lift because that's what builds lean muscle mass, helps with bone density, which is crucial for women as we age. And then of course, everyone likes to eat, right? So if you don't have lean muscle, you can't boost your metabolism. So you're having to eat like a bird and nobody likes that. No, no. Well, you know what? And again, I'm so glad that you brought up the cardio thing. Again, there's that myth that, and you see rows upon rows at, at these f f fitness facilities of just, you know, cardio equipment, whether it's the treadmill or the step climber or the bikes and, you know, and then there's the rows of TVs that go with it. And you see people who spend literally hours doing cardio and then they, but they, but they wonder why they're not getting results. And I think that if you're one of those individuals who's wondering why you are not getting results and you're spending two or three hours a day or on a regular basis doing cardio, the reason why is because you don't have any real muscle tone. And it's, mm -hmm. you know, muscle, as you said, muscle burns fat, muscle enhances our, or speeds up our metabolism. And if you're like me and you like to eat, then muscle is an absolute necessity. And you mentioned something that's super important, not just for women, but for men, and that's bone density. Yeah. As we get older, we lose that bone density. And you see a lot of people that are hunched over, both male and female. And it's because of that loss of bone density. And by the way, for you guys, milk does not do a body good. You're not going to get that much bone density from milk. It's just right. another myth. But anyway, so I'm excited to have you on the show to talk about some of these things. One of the other things I want to bring up is eating. Women, some guys too, but primarily I think women are affected by this thing of eating. They're afraid to eat too much. And, yeah. and there's like, you know again, because there's so much confusion out there, you'll see women who will have like a yogurt and a bagel and think that they're eating healthy. Yeah. And again, they're, they're not, they're, they're losing muscle tone. They're, they're again, back to what you called them, a, you know, cardio bunnies, you know, yeah. and, 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 they're, and they're starving themselves to death and they're still not healthy and they're losing, you know, their, their, what call it their physique. So talk about how much we should be eating or the myth about eating well, you know, it's interesting because a lot of times we have couples come into the gym all the time and they say, oh, we want to do this together, which I always encourage. It's nice to have a partner in crime to hold you accountable, to keep you motivated on the days you don't want to. But the biggest challenge is you have 
a male and a female come in, they're ready to go. And then the male just thinks about losing weight and he does. And the wife or the girl or whatever, the woman is killing it and she just doesn't change. Right. Well, again, there's a lot of underlying things that could be related to hormone and genetics and stuff like that. But taking that out, what a lot of people don't realize is guys have more lean muscle mass. So it makes it easier once they start eating clean and truly kind of hitting the weights. Not that you have to be killing it and lifting super, super heavy because there's the fear of women that they can bulk, which truthfully is extremely difficult. You've got to eat a lot. You've got to train hard. But everyone wants that toned physique. Right. So you have to eat to fuel your body to lose weight. I personally experienced this as well um, in my younger years. I used to be an endurance athlete, triathlons, marathons, and I steered clear of the gym for several years because in all honesty, through college and stuff, it became like a meat market. And I like, I'm an athlete. I like to train. I like to work out and I'd go into the gym and it's like, I just couldn't even get to the weights or machines because everyone's chit chatting or people interrupting. So I was like, you know what? I'm done with gyms. I'm just going to take it outside. I'm going to go another route. But in doing so, I ended up whittling my physique down um, just because of too much endurance activities, too much cardio, lost my lean muscle mass, and honestly could not eat much of anything, which is crazy because, you know, I'd, I love carbs and I would eat carbs and it would show the next day. So once I kind of put that phase away and decided, hey, I'm done with the endurance stuff, I'm going to start really lifting. That's when my body totally transformed. Now it's been years. I've been doing this. I, I compete as an athlete. I've been doing that for 10 years. So I'm obviously consistent now, but now each and every year, and obviously I'm aging, I can eat more and more. And I have such a flexible metabolism. Uh, you know, I, I post about it all the time. I eat donuts and Oreos and I have cheat meals regularly. And people are like, how do you do it? It's always been easy for you. And it hasn't been but I gained the knowledge and the experience to go, okay, I have to fuel my body to lose weight. And there's a method to the madness. There has to be strategy. You can't just go out today and be like, oh, I need to eat to fuel my body and take it all in. You're going to gain weight. But it's a process of getting your body acclimated to eating right. Lifting, again, doesn't have to be super heavy, but building that lean muscle mass this stimulates your metabolism and keeps your body burning like a machine. Think about your car. You got to put gas in it. If you're running on E, your body's just going to tap out. Well, your body is a machine. You constantly need to fuel it with proper nutrients, good foods, um, finding out what works for your body in related to like, if it's a carbs that your body likes better, fats you like, your body likes better, and then keeping it full so that you can just push. You can push hard through your workouts. You can develop the full muscle bellies. That's where you start really seeing the changes. So when someone says, Hey, I want to tighten up. I want to drop five pounds here or there. It's not as difficult because you have that base foundation. Yeah, absolutely. And you know, one of the things that I love about working out at your gym, by the way, uh, pro physique there in Gilbert is that you do have couples there. In fact, there's a couple there that trains in the morning when I do and so after they're done training, they go into the all the multi-purpose room and they and they work on their dance routine. And, mm -hmm. and they're and they're you know they're they're not interested in bodybuilding, but they want that strength that they need for dancing. And, and then you have some people there that are uh, bodybuilders, and then you have some other uh, individuals there that are training for other things, a Spartan race. And then you have a, a lot of moms that come in and they're training just to stay active. And you know if you're if you're a mom like like you are, you need that extra energy. You know, oh, yeah. if, you have, if you have kids, you need more energy, not less. And, yes. I, you know, I'm a big proponent that you need more muscle more than anything else. And, and, oh, and yeah. you know, again, sleep becomes a big thing. And it's so funny that people always ask me, you know, what's, you know, what's the quickest way to, quote, get in shape? And the first thing I ask them is, you know, how is your sleeping? Well, I'm not sleeping that much. Or, you know, I'm, I'm working, I'm, I'm working 60 hours a week. And I think, one of the blessings of the pandemic is that people are sleeping more because yeah. they have almost no choice. They, they, there's yeah. no reason for them to be at the office. So they're at home and stuff like that. So, you know, I think that for a lot of us here, at least in America, there's this weird thing about push, 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 grind, 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 no sleep, 
uh, let me have a bunch of energy drinks and therefore I'm somehow a, a hero. But yeah. the reality is we deplete ourselves and, you know, and I think people are, the first thing they want to cheat on is their sleep, which I've learned from experience that you cannot cheat sleep. Sooner or later, it will kick your butt. You'll get fat faster. You'll, you'll, you're, you become, uh, what do you call it? Uh, very, uh, not bitter, but uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Uh, um, grumpy. You know, I mean, yeah. <laughs> oh, yes, oh, and, yes. <laughs> and then you carve the, you crave the worst foods when you, when you're not sleeping and everything. I think sleep is foundational and we've gotten away from those real simple things. And, you know, one, one of the things that you said is it, it's, it's that strategy and people, you know, there's a lot of complication out there. I think a lot of it is, is, it's, I think, uh, the fault of, uh, these companies that try to sell you quote healthy foods which aren't really that healthy, you know, they're laced with a bunch of chemicals and sugars and, and they taste great and, but they're horrible for you. But, you know, bottom line is it's real simple. You have to eat good. You have to sleep good. You have to drink good or, or hydrate well. You have to have, you know, a lot of uh, enough water and, and it isn't that complicated, but over time, there's so much misinformation that I think the average person is overwhelmed and they hear, oh, you know, juicing, yeah, you know, juicing is the way to go. And, and I heard somebody say the other day, Hey, juicing is great. If you want to have all, you know, if you want to have a, an all organic diabetes. Yeah. <laughs> I haven't heard that. That's kind of funny. I thought that was good, <laughs> but yeah, it, it, there's just incredibly difficult. And I, and, and again, there's just too much confusion out there. Um, so let me ask you this. So, so when you went from being this endurance athlete to you switched over to lifting weights did you immediately thought okay i'm going to be a bodybuilder i'm going to shoot for the olympia talk about that transition from endurance to weights um the truth is no so you know i didn't know what i wanted to do i'm i need activity in my life it's great for stress relief it gives me time to focus on me you know being a mom business owner so many things i have to have that mental space each day where I can focus on something productive that benefits me because that truthfully helps me be a better boss, um, a better mom, a better creative person in regards to like all the different business aspects I have, a better athlete. So you have to do self-care too. So for me, that's exercise. Um, the endurance stuff was just wearing down on my body. I didn't like, honestly, the physique that I was creating because I was just becoming skinny fat. And um, I thought, gosh, I kind of wanted to get into this to get toned and stuff. So I got into just back into actually lifting at a gym. But then I started learning about this industry of competitions. And I don't want to be a bodybuilder, but I thought, oh, I like some of the physique. I like what I was seeing at some of the some of the physiques that I'd see females rocking in the gym. And I'm like, they look amazing. And so I started learning that they were competing. And I'm like, competing in what? You know, in fitness. Well, what does that mean? That's a very general term. So basically it's a, what I do and what our industry is, because a lot of people don't know, it's not just bodybuilding. Bodybuilding is the umbrella term of what we do. But um, my division is fitness. Uh, there's other divisions where you don't actually get on stage. You don't flex. You don't do any of that. It's the easiest way to explain it for most of the female divisions is a beauty pageant with muscles. So, <laughs> you know, I was like, okay, I like that. I don't want to be huge. Um, I want to be toned tight, you know, just have year round shape. So I learned about the industry and thought that'd be a good challenge. Again, growing up as an athlete, I like to be active. I like to be challenged. So jumped into um, training, trained honestly for a year and a half solid before I ever stepped on stage and I competed first in the figure division. So in the figure division, all they do is they're judging your physique. You go out and you hit model poses and they're judging your physique. Well, at that show, I saw these girls off to side stage wearing costumes and bouncing around. And I thought, what are they doing? Cause they look like they're having a lot of fun. And I thought, I need to hang with them. So I learned about the fitness division. Now the fitness division is where they do one portion and they judge your physique, which is one third of your score. 
And then two thirds of your score is based on a performance, which includes gymnastics, dancing, strength moves, and you can be as creative as you want. Mm -hmm. Well, that's right up my alley because I love performing. I grew up, I was a cheerleader. Um, I have no gymnastics experience, believe it or not, which people think is required. Um, and I have none, but I love a challenge. So I was like, I want to try this. I could, I'm not afraid to dance. I love to perform. Um, I have no stage fright. So I was like, let's do this. And I did my first fitness show, never even having seen a fitness routine. So I put some cattywampus routine together and loved it, even though it was like, what is this girl doing? But I was hooked. And then I learned about the sport more and I was just enthralled. And I thought, this is amazing because I have creative control about what I produce and what I put on stage. And it was never about winning. It was about a personal goal for me, just to have something to work towards, to have a finale. You know, again, it's like, do you work for a triathlon or a marathon, which is what I've done. There was an end date and then you create new goals. So I loved this and I 100% accredit my success to the aspect that I just went in with passion and enjoyment and I didn't worry about the outcome. I didn't worry if the judges didn't like my routine I put together because truthfully, I didn't really know what they were looking for. Right. So as long as I stepped off stage and was like, that was fun, I was proud of my routine that I presented, I was enjoying it and I just was lucky and started doing really well and then learned about being an IFBB pro and then learned about the Olympia and thought, well, that'd be cool one day. Never <laughs> thought it'd actually happen. And then here we are. So it was just a matter of kind of switching goals. Just as we grow, as we progress, everybody should be setting goals to take themselves to a next level each and every day, setting big goals yearly. Um, setting quarterly goals to make sure you meet those year-end goals. So for me, it was just, okay, that was a phase of my life I was done with on the endurance side. Now I want to have something that challenges me in some other realm. Didn't know what it was, learned about this, and I've been hooked and still in it. Yeah, it, it, the rest is history, as they say, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah, <laughs> exactly. So, you know, what's amazing is that when you said uh, you had no gymnastics background, that floors me. Because one of the things that um, that's amazing about you is your ability to jump, your gymnastics ability is, it, it, you know, in my opinion, pretty fascinating to watch. In fact, uh, there's this video, I'm going to see if we can play it. And in fact, the video, I believe, is of the picture you have there in the background where you're up in the air several feet, you know, <laughs> you're basically defying yeah. gravity. And there it is, there it is. Yeah. And even... <laughs> There, yep, there. That's the one. That to me yeah. is like such a perfect, you know, epitome of what your sport's about, right? What your level's about, and also what the Whitney Jones brand is about. I mean, it's it is about you know that big leap and and yeah. some of the stuff that that uh, you know that that's part of your brand. So I want to play this video, and then uh, hopefully I can make it work. If not, my my editors will fix up my my flubbing here. Uh, but let's see if we can uh, make it work. Yeah, I'm curious. Which <laughs> and uh, that way the, they can see this because it is an amazing routine. Is this the right video? Is it the right video? This was um, early. It was earlier last year. So this is not the one that I have the jumping one. Gotcha. And you know, what's a bummer is this is you can't ever hear the music in this one either. So it kind of kills the whole vibe. But the one um, from that photo is the Olympia. Oh, that's right. 2019 that's right. Olympia. Yeah. There you go. But you yeah, can see what I love about this is the creativity that you were talking about, right? You come out here with this little skirt on with the lights and it just goes, oh, there's Arnold. There's Arnold. Yeah. <laughs> and, and that right there, by the way, is something that Arnold doesn't do with just everybody. So for no. Arnold to do a, a selfie is a big deal. 
It was. And you know what? I'll tell you a funny story about that is because I know he only picks one athlete to highlight each year. Right. And I saw him walking up and it totally distracted me. (laughs) And then I had my routine where I go to the front of the stage, but he was right there and I thought I was going to kick him. So I had to modify my routine, a, a huge portion of it, and change and go to a complete plan B that I was not even prepared for. Because I thought, I can't go up and scare him. So yeah, a lot of this is on the fly. Uh, All right, let's see. That's amazing. All right, so let's see if we can find the Olympia. And again, we'll have the... uh... And what's interesting, a lot of people don't know this, but and you correct me if I'm wrong, for your, for your, uh, this is the 2019 Olympia or the 2018? 19. Mm-hmm. So if, if I'm not mistaken, you had a, a torn ACL. Um, so I had, <laughs> I've had a lot of injuries. 2018, <laughs> I had a torn ACL. 2019, I had a torn labrum and rotator cuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. So, okay, let's see. Is your reading? Olympia champion from the USA, Whitney Jones. Here's our reigning champion. This routine is important. We saw the routine of Rayo. Now it's Whitney, the <laughs> champion. But she went M&M on us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. She knows she is on. I know how it is to defend it. It's late, it's late, it's late, it's late, it's late. Time's up. Oh, oh. Wow. Yeah. Perfect backhand spring. <laughs> the defending champion, they say you have to make other people beat you. She is not waiting for that to happen. She's not. I like the costume. Body looks great. The energy. One arm push ups. Now it's important to note, unless there's a big mistake, I was told this a long time ago. It's not a gymnastics routine, so the judges are not gymnastics judges. That's judging correct. the quality of the moves. They're, yes, it's the quality of the moves, the precision. You're right, they are not gymnastic judges. It's not the gymnastic competition. They look for, um, you know, to do, do the move. If you do a move, do it, do it right. That's incredible. Oh, well, thank you. So, okay, so for that routine, how long does it take you to put that routine together? Typically, you practice months out um, and you have your ideas and then you kind of you have to modify it as needed based on, um, you know, maybe your skills are improving and you're like, oh, I need to take it up a notch or you find that you're struggling on certain parts and you got to change it. But Most of us at this level are having our routine crafted months out. And then in my case, (laughs) I always seem to suffer something. And, um, you know, like that one, I didn't have to modify too much, but I tore my entire right side, rotator cuff labrum, and it was about six weeks out. So anything that involved upper body stability, I had to change. I had to focus on the lower body, which was the jumps and the hops. Um, same type thing when I tore my ACL, I still competed. That was actually my first title I won was the Arnold Classic in 2018. And I was coming back from a career ending neck surgery. Wow. So everyone thought in 2017 career was done. Great job, Whitney. We'll never see you again. And I was like, oh no, I'll be back. So I had set my sights on coming back 
to just show people that there is a way you can overcome these injuries. You know, I never thought I would be at the caliber I was at again, because again, I had lost full function of my right arm. I had no movement um, for three months. So it was pretty devastating. And I didn't think I'd ever have use of it again, but had the surgery, woke up from surgery and literally went, oh my gosh, I feel my arm. And from that moment on, I said, I'm going to, I'll be back and I'll be better than ever. I'll promise you that. So heading into the Arnold that year for 2018, I would post on my Instagram and everyone thought I was just full of crap. They're like, there is no way you're stepping on stage. There is no way those videos are, are current. And it was just crazy. Literally the media, everyone counted me out. So I was just ready to show up and present something to show people injuries don't have to just devastate all your goals. Well, then, you know, I was three and a half weeks out from the Arnold Classic and blew my ACL and my MCL, (laughs) one of my flips. And I thought, I can't not show up. I'm here to prove everyone wrong. So I didn't say a single word to anybody. Obviously, like my inner circle family friends, they knew. Um, And then I had to perform actually with a full eight pound, I think it was eight pounds, metal surgical brace in my routine just so my leg wouldn't give out and um, came up with an entirely new routine (laughs) because I I literally had one leg. All my jumps were one legged jumps and ended up winning. And on stage in the interview um, at the Arnold Classic, Arnold comes and gives you the award and interviews you on stage. And he said, what is this thing you have on your leg? This, did you hurt yourself? And I said, actually, I have a torn ACL and an MCL and I'm flying home tomorrow to have surgery, but I didn't want to bow out of the competition. And he was like, what? <laughs> so, you know, there's always a way, there is always a way to find a solution. It may not be the path you were intending, but if you can stay optimistic, if you can stay positive and you work with what is working, versus focusing on the things that aren't, then you're on the right path. And then you can find a way. And I never thought I would be able to deliver a performance like I did. But again, you have that, I had that deep inner strength to just get up there and show people, to give people hope that something that is career ending or such a devastating incident and experience for me still had a positive outcome. And I think that drive and that inner grit is truthfully what allowed me to have a performance that really just was full of emotion, full of just not anger, but just that, that energy to say, look, I can do it. So can you. And then it ends up working out as my first title I ever won. So it was a pretty exciting experience. Yeah, that's incredible. And, you know, a couple of things that you said there, uh, to me is the most important is having that mindset because mm-hmm. you look at somebody like, like Arnold. And I think for me, anyway, one of the things that makes Arnold such a, uh, iconic person to look up to is that he has set some crazy goals. You talk about setting big goals and quarterly goals and stuff like that. And, and you're looking at a guy who went from being an athlete to, Hey, I'm going to go into the movies and, you know, and, uh, and, and, you know, people said, Hey, you're not going to make it. Your accent's too thick. Your name is too big. Your muscles are too big. And, and, and you know, and, and people have always made fun of, of maybe his uh, acting, uh, but he did it. He went into the movies and at one point he's getting 20 and $25 million a movie and, and, and it's incredible. And so then he goes in, I'm going to set a goal to be the governor of California. And they said, no, yeah. you shouldn't start there. You, you should start, you know, as mayor or this, and, and he says, no, I'm just going to do this. And so I want to talk about this, how, you know, stepping out of your comfort zone, setting these outrageous, even ridiculous goals. Talk about this, because I think a lot of us, when we're kids, we're, we set these sometimes crazy goals, right? Whether to be a singer or an endurance athlete or a writer, but then, you know, life goes on and we get beat down a little bit and we start thinking, smaller and smaller and some people even stop setting goals so talk about stepping out of your comfort zone that for me is um the whole emphasis behind my clothing line fearless because in reality years ago 
I just adopted that mindset on a daily basis, primarily because I had seen in my life several friends who just decided to settle on this mediocre life. They weren't happy, but society tells them, oh, this is what you're supposed to do. You get married, you have kids, and you just live a boring life. And I'm like, that sounds horrible. <laughs> so, you know, it's like, okay, you know, and people would ask, and I would say, if you had a million dollars, what would you do? But it's like, there was just one day, I was, I, I don't even remember what happened. Might've been a bad day or something. And I thought, gosh, if I could change this, if I could do X, Y, Z, I would, and I started listing all these things. And I wasn't even 30 yet. And I thought, what the heck am I waiting for? Like, I have my whole life ahead of me, but yet I'm allowing these things, whether it's fear of my own failure, of, you know, fear of what other people would think, um, allowing society to kind of dictate what I was supposed to do. And I just thought, you know what? Life is too short. I don't ever want to live with regret. But if I don't take risks, if I don't step out of my comfort zone, I'm never going to know. And I don't want to be the coulda, woulda, shoulda. So it's like, okay, so let's identify some things. And truth be told, I started small. You know, it was like, okay, I'm going to do this and I'm going to try this. And it, it was fun. It like, it lit a fire in me. So then it starts going, okay, set bigger goals. Like now I live by the thought process of set goals so high, people think you're crazy. And if I do that, or if someone says you're crazy, I know I'm on the right path because that's what drives me. We have to have constant motivation every day. And you can't always look for motivation elsewhere. You have to find it within. We know what makes us happy. We know things that we may be in a bad mood, but something changes our mood. What is it? For me, if I'm having a bad day, no lie, I go to a meme library that I have on my phone and I laugh because laughter changes everything for me. But yeah, it's a matter of going, okay, stop worrying so much about all of these what ifs and start living fearlessly. And if you think about it, whatever it is right now in your head that you're wanting to pursue, but you're a little hesitant, take five minutes, write down on a piece of paper, what is it you're scared of? Because after you do it, you get it out, literally do this process, then you're going to look at the list and go, eh, not really a big deal. Not really a big deal. You know, the thing is, okay, I'm going to step on stage and I'm going to do this show. What if I'm last place? You know, first time ever. I could have gone in with the mindset that my boys aren't going to think I'm the best mom anymore. My friends aren't going to like me. What if I mess up my routine? Like none of it's going to change. The world is not going to end if I end up doing the hokey pokey on stage. Big deal. You know what I mean? So it's like you, you itemize these things and then you look at it and go, what really am I afraid of? And all it is, is us holding us back. Yes. So I started living this fearless mentality of constantly trying to just push and pursue my goals. And it's elevated me to a point of happiness that I can't even express because I'm constantly accomplishing little goals as well as small goals. And I'm in control of that. I'm in control of how high I set the bar for myself. I'm in control of, okay, what is it I want to do now? What is it that's exciting me at this moment in my life? And I need to find time to pursue that goal because in the end, that's what makes me happy. That's what motivates me. And again, helps me be better in everyone's world that I'm currently involved in. If I'm happy and if I'm feeling accomplished, I'm going to do a better job with anyone I am in relation to for business, personal, doesn't matter. And you mentioned, you know, the, 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 the fear that sometimes that we have of, quote, being a bad parent. Mm -hmm. And one of the great benefits of setting and achieving goals and building that confidence that you can set and achieve goals or that you're not afraid to fail. I think that's a yeah. huge thing is that that is passed on to our children first they, they they get it by osmosis for lack of better terms but they see mom or they see dad or, or in some cases mom and dad and setting these goals and sometimes people saying that's ridiculous but you do it anyway hey yeah. you know you're you're hurt you shouldn't um you know you shouldn't be going and doing that routine because you know you're you've blown out this arm or the the rotator cuff or the acl and the mp you know and all this other stuff but you're training your kids 
on how to be fearful or fearless, right? And how to set goals and achieve them. And when you look at school, all the important stuff is not really taught at school, which is, you know, how to set and achieve goals, how to have a relationship with yourself, um, you know, how to manage money and things like that. The really important stuff is not really taught at school. That still is left for the parents to, you know, to be taught at home. But I look at you, I'm thinking, man, your two boys have to be able to, you know, I, I know that they look up to you and say, man, that's great. If, if mom can do it, I can probably do it. Or if mom's done it, she can probably teach me how to do it. And that for a child is priceless. Yes. And I think it's important, you know, when they were younger, I, I did that. It's like, okay, I know children pick up on stuff and they mimic behaviors. So again, some days, my days are crazy. So some days I would have to get up and do my cardio at 3 a.m. If I had a busy, busy work day and then the boys had sports at night. And no, that wasn't fun. But again, if I have a goal, goals don't just get achieved by themselves. It becomes a routine and a daily practice of habits that will get you to your goal. So they've seen me. They've seen me do cardio sometimes at night or it's a weekend and we've got plans. And I say, OK, I've got a show coming up. I need to hit the gym real quick. I got to get my workout in. They know I stick to a plan. And even though when they were younger, they, I don't get it. I don't understand. You can't skip a day. Well, yeah, I can skip a day, but when I have a show coming up, I have a certain schedule I got to follow. So again, it doesn't change them and doesn't change what they need to do or our time. You know, again, they go down with me and hang out, but they, it's established these things that years later, they'd say, I realized, mom, you had this big goal to do really well at your show, at your shows. And there were days you were so tired, but you still got up. That makes me go, okay, well, if I want to be great, you know, my son at the time was playing soccer and he said, I didn't want to get up for the game this morning. I was so tired, but I want to represent for my team and I need to show up and I need to be awake. And I know that even though I'm tired, I need to bring my best and we're driving to the game. He said, just like you do every day when you're trying to push towards your goals. And it was like this light bulb of, oh my gosh, they are understanding. They are picking it up because they were younger then, you know, and it's like, wow, they're seeing it. Well, now they're older. I have a 12 year old and a 14 year old. They're both boys. They're into sports. They're into trying to save money, like just starting to kind of get into those early adult years where they have to start thinking for themselves. And it's amazing the little lessons that they're seeing just, just say that I'm kind of living my life and not forcing it down their throats, but showing by example, that's helping grow them to be the people I want them to be, you know? So it's an indirect way of doing it where I can be good as a parent and try to teach them the values and the lessons that I want, but you got to walk the walk and talk the talk. Absolutely. You know, ultimately they're, they're going to, they're going to make that connection or they're already making that connection that discipline equals freedom, discipline equals reaching my goals. And that's what you're teaching them. And it's so, again, it's priceless. It's invaluable because today there's a lot of adults who don't understand discipline. There's a lot of children that have no idea what discipline is. And, and if you, you know, and, and, and discipline sometimes is, is looked at as maybe a dirty word or man, that's so hard, but you know, the way I look at it, and again, this is not anything I came up with. I don't know who to give credit to, but they said, you know, you got to pick your heart. Living with discipline is hard. Living without discipline is hard. You got to choose your heart, right? Yeah. I mean, yep. if you want something easy, you can work at a fast food restaurant and that's easy. It's, it takes really the stress off of you. There's no thinking right. involved. You show up, you flip burgers or whatever it is, and then you go home. But the quality of life is probably not going to be very rewarding. So sure. sometimes easy is the harder way to go. Uh, but bottom line, discipline is freedom. And, mm -hmm. and that again, teaching that to your children is, is such a valuable tool. So let's talk about this. Let's talk about how your athletics have spilled into, let's say, your business. How mm -hmm. has being an, uh, you know, let's use the word an elite athlete, transferred that into business? Well, so it, it kind of brings up some of the stuff you were talking about. So mindset is huge for me. If you're in a positive mind space, 
great things can happen. If you're continually putting out this negative aura, negative vibe, that's what you're going to get back. So in working as an athlete, you know, again, kind of going with this fearless mentality, it's allowed me to take risks with business. Opening up the gym Pro Physiques, we opened in 2010 and everyone thought we were crazy because it wasn't the most ideal time to be starting a business. But I truly believe that if you are passionate about something and you're doing it for the right reasons, the chances of failure are slim to none in my book. And for me, it's, um, you know, I've had some experiences in life. I used to work in the corporate world. I worked for an ad agency, loved my job, but I wasn't super passionate about it. And at that time I would work my full day job, come home. I would train people out of my house for fun, literally charge them nothing, but I enjoyed it. So it was like, I'm my second job. Well, I was on bed rest with my second child for three and a half months, which if you can imagine me on bed rest, you probably are like, what? But that gave a lot of time to think. And during those moments, I remember thinking, what do I want to do? I want to wake up every morning and just be like energized about going to work. And I wasn't at that moment. So long story short, I ended up um, after my second child, I ended up quitting my um, great job, amazing job at the ad agency, making great money. And there was a moment of, am I crazy for doing this? But I went and got a job at a local gym for minimum wage, (laughs) which was insane. But it was like, it felt right. And I thought, I just want to help people. I want to give back. I want to see the, the results that I am impacting and making a positive change in others. So, you know, again, it kind of was that aspect of follow your passion and do it for the right reasons and things will work out. From there, then had the opportunity to open up my own business. And again, bad timing, but I have amazing people that I would, uh, we hired as our staff. So things just happen. So it's going with that fearless mentality of, look, I want to, I don't want to have regret. I don't want to look back and, and think, gosh, I should have. And that's the same thing for business. For me as an athlete, if I have a new skill that I want to try, some crazy backflip, you know, obviously there's fear there, but you've got to be strategic about it. You've got to research it, learn how the technique is supposed to be done, do some progression steps to get you to that goal. It's the same thing for business, right? You don't just open a business. You got to do your research. You put together a business plan. You find all the right people to connect before your launch. So everything that I've learned as an elite athlete now parlays into what I do for business. And again, doing it for the right reasons, focusing on mindset. You know, I'm sure with all your business experience, Bert, there have been times that it's just like, gosh, everything is piling on, right? And you just feel like, I'm screaming mercy. God, come on, no more. I can't handle anymore. But then again, you have to look back. And for me, you know, there have been some crazy roads in all this business that that we've been open and developing new businesses. But honestly, I go back to the mindset of switching from I have to, to I get to. And that is something with fearless that I live by all the time. So many people create, and if you listen to your own language every day, oh, I have to go to the gym. Oh, I have to go pick up my boys. Oh, I have to go to the grocery store. That has a negative connotation. So right there, you're putting out negative energy. If you can flip your words, a simple word change changes everything. I get to go to the gym. I get to go pick up my boys. I get to go to the gym because I'm healthy enough to do that. I get to go pick up my boys because I'm fortunate enough to have two healthy boys and a vehicle to do so. I get to go to work because I'm lucky to have a job. You know, and even in negative situations where, okay, I'm a boss, I have to fire someone. No, I get to fire someone. Why? Because I am the boss and there is a reason why this person is not good and I get to replace them by getting them out of the environment and bringing someone else in. But the way I coach my athletes, the way I teach my children, the way I talk with my friends, that little flip of your mind and your words is so powerful that people don't even realize it. And I have to practice it daily because honestly, I still get caught going, oh, I have to go do this. And it's like, wait a second. No, show gratitude for what you have 
And it changes everything to go, okay, I get to do this. Because like I said, when I was on bed rest, one of the things that I realized like every moment of the day was the ability that I didn't have to be active. I got to drive to the doctor once a week and drive back and forth from the hospital from all these doctor visits. And I would see people running or going out for a walk. And I so badly wanted that. And it was kind of all that that I'm like, I'm taking so much for granted. Right. You know, just the ability to get out of my bed and walk. Now, again, my situation was temporary and I knew there was an end result, but it starts going, okay, start appreciating what we have now. As we age, things are going to break down, you know, our health can deteriorate. That's the truth of it. So if we're not taking advantage of everything now, trying to be positive, trying to utilize like all the stuff that we have at our fingertips, all the choices that we have to make, we're missing out. So honestly, it's, it's a matter of, I feel I've been successful in business because so many of the things that I do in business, as well as an athlete, they all correlate. And it all goes to taking risks, not being afraid to fail, doing what sets your heart on fire. Because again, I always say, I won't be outworked. And if I do something, I won't fail. And I used to say it kind of like, do I really believe that? Now, I 100% believe it, you know? So it's like, you kind of fake it till you make it, but it helped me early on. And now it's like, you throw anything at me. I've been in different business industries and it's kind of a joke amongst my friends. It's like, I may not be the most successful, but I will make sure at my own level, I can succeed because I do things with a base foundation all for the right reasons and with very concrete strategy, you know, doing the research, putting forth the effort, taking the time to do things right. Those all equate to success, whether it's in business, personal life, on the stage as an athlete, those are basic foundation, fundamental things that we all need to do no matter what we're pursuing. Yeah, I love that. And first of all, kudos to leaving the big title, the big job, which is one of the things that we're programmed to do, go out there and get a big degree and a big job and a big car and a big house. And that's great. But I love the fact that you said, you know what, I'm going to take a step back Mm -hmm. and I'm going to go do this other thing. As you mentioned at, at uh, base wages there, you're kind of starting over again, which a lot of people I'm sure told you, you, you got to be crazy. You're going to leave that paycheck and you're going to go do that. And, and, (gasps) and you know what, that's just part of making those big changes. Uh, Sometimes you just got to do it. Uh, yeah. and, and I also like the fact that you said, Hey, it's a progression. Maybe you don't, for some people, maybe they can't quit the job like that, but right. you can start slowly building up that side hustle until you're confident enough that, okay, I'm ready to cut the cord. And you know what you said about the mind in, in, in our language, I'm, yeah. I'm a big believer that we are constantly in a state of affirmation, either negative affirmations or positive affirmations. I'm always running late. I can't ever save money. I can't ever lose weight. Those are emotional affirmations that build that uh, those cords. So where you won't be able to do those things as opposed to saying, you know, I'm always on time or I'm working on getting better at being on time or losing weight, I'm going to figure it out because I'm determined to get healthy and whatever. And Mm -hmm. so that those little flips, like you said, I have to change that to I get to. First of all, the great thing about that is when you say I get to, at least from my perspective, it is kind of a gratitude, uh, kind of uh, gratitude is, is kind of below that, right? Because you are aware that you have this privilege, this gift of having two children, of getting in a car, of running this business, of starting this other business, of going and competing at this elite level. Mm -hmm. These are affirmations of gratitude and aware that not everybody has these privileges. You know, we take, uh, we take having kids as a, it's a normal thing, but there are people out there who are struggling who are desperate to have a child Mm -hmm. and it's it's a great gift. Uh, And so it's wonderful. But I, anyway, I love the whole, I get to versus I have to, what a, 
small little change has massive, massive impact. Mm -hmm. And it really does. And like I said, it's something I still can get caught up in where on my busy days, I have to have to, and it's like, stop, because honestly, what you're putting out is what kind of sets that tone. And when I'm having a bad day or I feel like, okay, my, I'm running out of gas, I'm late for this appointment, I have to take a step back and go, I'm creating this. This is on me because if I keep with this negative ah frustration, I'm going to stay in this and the day's just going to keep getting worse and worse with other stuff happening. So it, it is something if you're having a bad day right now or your morning's starting off horribly, take a second to get some quiet time and re uh, just recharge your brain to say, all right, I can be in control of making this a positive day now. And I promise you, I promise you it will. I have so many friends who seriously come back to me and they're like, I was having a horrible day, but I went through that thought process. And I, I say it all the time. It's my H2 G2. Switch it from have to to get to. And people have sent me photos. They write it on their mirror every morning. It's just that daily motto to, hey, find a way to be in a positive mind space to show gratitude. And that can set the path for your day. Yeah, I love that. Absolutely. You know, what's, in, what's incredible is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Again, it's these little things. And one of the things I want to I want to come back and emphasize, one of the things that you said is that if you are stuck, if you're frustrated or you're mad, you start looking at these funny memes. And, yeah. and again, one of the things that I think as humans that, that we don't pay attention to is we don't give ourselves enough choices to feel good. Yeah. You know, like we're limited to it's either going to be a diet coke or some junk food. Those things make me feel good as opposed to. Let me look at funny memes. Let me look at something inspirational. My my favorite thing to do if, if I'm really kind of down in the dumps is uh, I like to laugh as well. And so I go to comedy. I I, I love Jim Gaffigan and, and there's yes. a couple other comedians that I just I will watch these things over and over again until I start until my positivity comes back to the yes. level where I need to have it at so I can go do whatever hard thing is before me. And again, this is one of the things that I love about Going to the gym, sometimes a leg workout can be, or any workout can be daunting. Sure. And the fact that you have to get mentally ready for this daunting workout and you hate it. In fact, one of the things that's on your wall is, uh, what is it? Uh, love the hate? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. You have to sit there and love the hate <laughs> line that you're going through. Yes. Because... On the other side of that is that high five, that confidence. Yes, I did it. Yep. Oh, that feels so good. Doing something hard is an incredible feeling when you're done. For sure. Absolutely. And that's something we can control. So again, there's, especially this year, that's the one thing I think so many people have realized. There's so much, so much out of our control. So we got to focus on the things that we can control to make our days better, make our businesses better, because there's always going to be stuff hitting us that we can't. So focus on what you can control and making sure that you're feeling accomplished, making sure you're in a good place is the first place you got to start. So yes, it's like, okay, maybe your walls are crumbling and there's a lot of stuff going on, but you can get in and something as simple as a workout is something that you make the choice of every single day. You can feel accomplished and proud of yourself every single day so that when each day the bad things that happen, eh, it's not going to bother you as much. But if you aren't focusing on anything you can control and you feel like your life's spinning out of control, the littlest thing is going to just keep spinning you out. Yeah, absolutely. I love it. Thank you so much. Yes. Uh, there were so many great takeaways. And this is, again, uh, little things can have such a big impact. And, and, getting our mind right. And one of the things that you said over and over again is doing what you love to do for the right reasons, for your reasons. So right. there's a lot of, a lot of great takeaways. And if somebody wanted to find out more about you or wanted to find out maybe more about Fearless or, or Pro Physiques, what's the best website to find out more about you? My personal website is Fit Wit Jones. So F-I-T-W-H-I-T Jones, J-O-N-E-S.com. 
Um, if you like shenanigans, you can always find me on Instagram. And I'm I'm a little bit goofy, but that's that's me. That's my personality. And it's Whitney Jones underscore IFBB Pro. Those are the two easiest ways. My website connects to my apparel line, um, connects to some of the stuff I do for the different businesses. And then if you're just trying to be curious about my personality or crazy tricks and flips and stuff I do, and you like ridiculous entertainment, Instagram's the way to go. <laughs> yep, yep, I love it. And I'm going to put all the links here in the show notes so everybody can follow and just click along there. Again, Whitney Jones, thank you so much for stopping by. Looking forward to catching up with you soon. Thanks so much. I appreciate the opportunity.